Singapore has unveiled a 107 billion Singapore dollar war chest to ensure the country emerges stronger from the COVID-19 pandemic. This year's budget includes 11 billion Sing dollars from past reserves. The first time the country is doing so for a second con su successive financial year. Now, this is going to go towards tackling the more immediate challenges. Gwyneth Chiu with more. The money drawn from the past reserves will fund the COVID-19 resilience package. Of this, $4.8 billion will be for public health measures, such as COVID-19 testing, vaccination and contact tracing. $5 billion will go towards workers and businesses. Measures include top-ups to existing relief packages to help companies pay wages and workers keep their jobs. The other $1.2 billion will be in the form of targeted support for the worst hit sectors such as aviation. But beyond providing immediate relief, Singapore is looking at the big picture, the future. And that's why this year's budget is named Emerging Stronger Together. The COVID-19 pandemic has triggered global shifts on the economic, social and political fronts on a scale arguably greater than the 1929 Great Depression. It has set off new domains for competition and cooperation. It has also accelerated technological advance. To secure our future, we must build new capabilities in our people and businesses and find new ways to work together effectively. $24 billion will go toward helping businesses and workers adapt to these changes. That starts with rebuilding the aviation sector to secure Singapore's position as a key air hub. Digital connectivity will be expanded so that businesses can collaborate and innovate with partners around the world. The government will also help businesses fund their digital transformation. Startups, mature enterprises and large local enterprises will get targeted assistance. And to help Singaporeans take on these new jobs, some $5.4 billion will be pumped into upskilling and training programs. As for the mix of local and foreign manpower, Mr Heng says the government will need to strike a balance. It will further support firms to retain and hire locals by extending a scheme that co-funds wage increases. From next year, it will also bring down the proportion of mid-skilled foreign employees that firms can hire in the manufacturing sector. We have to accept what Little Island can accommodate. To strike a balance, we must focus on enhancing the complementarity of local and foreign manpower and step up on industry transformation. One such industry undergoing transformation is food and agriculture, where $60 million will be set aside for technology adoption. That's part of the recently announced Singapore Green Plan 2030, which is part of the Republic's efforts to build a sustainable and livable home for Singaporeans. To fund the country's move towards sustainability, the government will issue green bonds on selected public infrastructure projects such as the Tuas Nexus Waste and Water Treatment Facility. And to help meet Singapore's longer-term needs, it intends to borrow by issuing new bonds for major infrastructure projects such as new MRT lines and climate change works. From the start of 2023, the government will also implement goods and services tax on imported items that cost up to $400. Mr Heng says this will level the playing field for local businesses. Finally, to support households, he announced a $900 million package to cushion the impact of the pandemic. Let us continue to focus on what lies ahead and chart a clear direction forward. Let us continue to think long term tackle long-term challenges such as climate change and future pandemics, and forge partnerships with people around us in Singapore, as part of Singapore Together, and with people around the world. Let us strive to emerge stronger together as a united and shining red dot trusted by all. Mr. Sivika, sir, I beg to move.